Today's the day we're making that bone broth. Welcome back to our channel, guys and gals. Today we're making that beef bone broth I've been promising you guys about. Summer's winding down, fall's here. Finally, canning season for the bone broth. You saw the chicken bone broth. If not, I'll link it somewhere in today's video. But these have been in the freezer. I hadn't gotten around to it. When you get your cow into the butcher and everything, you can request to get your soup bones. Otherwise, you know, they will toss them. This makes the best bone broth. It's healthy for you. It's cheaper than what you'll buy in the store. It's easy to make. They sell it for a ridiculous amount of money in the store and it don't taste as good as what you can make at home. So... What we're going to do is we're going to unwrap these. I should have took these out last night and let them defrost. Instead, I took them out this morning. It's actually cool here in Florida this morning, so it's taking a while. But we're going ahead and get these roasted. I've got my oven preset at 425. If you have yours out overnight defrosting, then you knock it back to, say, 400. And then like 45 minutes to an hour roasting that's just going to give it a deeper flavor for your broth so i'm going to cut the camera off get this here because i'm just holding the camera i ain't got it on the tripod this is more less work for you but more time consuming so i didn't set up the tripod because this is going to take you know over a few days time so i'm just going to unwrap these and put them in the pan and then i'll bring you back all right, you see I got eight soup bones ready to go in the oven to be roasted for about 45 minutes to an hour. Once you hear it sizzling, you check it, make sure that it comes out brown caramelized. That's what you're going for. And I'll bring you back when, at this point, as you see, I just put them in. I don't have a roasting pan. That's ideal, but put them in something. I got a little bit of olive oil on there. That's it. Um, if I wanted to open up a can of tomato paste or I had a can open, which would have been ideal, I would have put some on there to help with the caramelization of these. But that's okay. That's all I'm going to do. I'm going to pop them in the oven and let them do their thing. And I'm going to go take care of some other stuff. And then we'll come back when it's ready to come out. Halfway through the time, I'm just going to flip them real quick get them back in there to roasting they were pro still halfway frozen when I put them in here I wanted to bring you along real quick for this then I'll start getting my big pot out and the veggie scraps and everything. We've got about 20 minutes left. I'll get these back in there in the oven, let them do their thing, and we'll meet you back. All right, we're back. They're roasted, just coming out of the oven. This is what you want them to look like. You see the, the dark, deep, dark caramelization. So now we're gonna get them into the pot I'm going to prop you up. It's going to be kind of funky, but we'll make it work. Hang on. All right. You're literally sitting on a toaster, on a, a tea pitcher, on my pop socket. So, we're going to make this work. Hopefully, you don't fall over. Say hi. All right. So, let me find my oven mitt. I don't want to burn myself. And I'm going to use this. This is my biggest pot. Or the big pot I have. And we're just going to drop these soup bones in here. Look. Juicy good stuff. We're going to scrape this. I'm not going to do this on camera. Too much. But you want all this goodness in there too. I'll do that off camera but get these off but look how pretty these are get these out of here and into the pot 
These are so pretty. It smells so good in here. Because these were roasting. All right. These are my veggie scraps that I keep always in the freezer and fill up. You can put your carrots, your onion, garlic, just all kinds of scraps that you have. I always to make sure mine's not got any kind of mold or anything like that that I put in here. Um, to use for my broth. The garlic peels, onion peels, your carrot scraps. Some people use potato scra uh, scraps. But I always start a freezer bag and keep a bag going. Sometimes I have multiples and I probably got one or two still in there. But this is what we're working with today. And then you want to get a couple bay leaves in there. If you have never made your own bone broth before, they're missing out. It's so good for you. I don't have a thing where I can get my own peppercorns out, but this one has where you can get the coarsest ones, which is close to actual big ones, so we're going to do that. Give me about a teaspoonful in there. I want some garlic powder. Love garlic. Now when you're canning, you have to be careful with your seasonings. If you're new to garlic, just so you don't know. Um, like especially with like sage. Sage is your number one you have to watch with because it intensifies when you can. Add some salt. I'm going to add a little time. Don't you wish you could add a little time to your life? You're going to add water. You know what? Hang on just a second. And put this on. Then I can add the water. Helps to take the lid back off. Have you made your own broth before? If so, what ingredients have you added? It's good for gut health. Leaky gut health. Um, a lot of people used it during the 2020 pandemic. Now I'm covering everything with water. I know y'all can't see it, but and then I'm going to add a splash of vinegar, a couple teaspoons, a couple tablespoons. That draws out the marrow and the bone marrow and everything. So you got salt, peppercorns, um, garlic powder, bay leaves. I said the peppercorns. I don't even know if y'all can see any of this. Because you're prop where I can't even see. I put thyme leaves in there. Um, let me grab y'all. Now that my hands are free. And grab me one of these. We've got it on the stove now. Where I can actually 
do something with it. I'm going to press this down. You see the bones are in the bottom. We're going to let this go low and slow for at least 12 hours, up to 36 hours probably. I'm going to scrub this and the other pan out and get all that goodness in here too. But we're going to put the lid on this and just let it go. Low and slow. But the collagen is good for your joint health. Uh, of course your skin and hair. You ladies know that. Uh, it may help with weight loss. But for the ones that have already made, um, made your own bone broth and everything, you already know it tastes so much better. And it seems healthier than what you can get in the store. But, I mean, the store is good to have a store bought. is good to have on hand if you can't make your own. Um, it is getting into the cold and flu season, among other things. But, definitely get you some bone broth and put it on your shelves. Or make you some. It's even better than make you some. But, I'll get going. I'm going to cover this up. And we'll get back to it when it's time to can. All right, so I went ahead and take took everything out, drained it, brought it out on the porch since it was in the 40s to let it cool overnight. And as you see, a lot of the fat has came to the top, but it's not all. I mean, it's barely just gotten to cool down, and this is what I've gotten so far. I wanted to bring you along because... <laughs> Um, I let it go for like 13 hours last night, and it was smelling so good, and I just didn't really want to carry it on to the 24, you know, 36 hours, because it looked perfect, the stuff was off the bones, there was nothing really left, and the bones were really soft, so I went ahead and cut it off, took everything out, drained it through a, um, like a sifter, or not a sifter, but you know, the, the fine mesh uh, strainer and a um, old towel and got everything out, possibly, hopefully, and everything. And this is what it came out. And then brought it out here where it'd be in the 40s. And this is what it's looking out. Of course, I cleaned the pot out before I put it back in, the liquid back in. So, this is where we're at. Again, I'm on my porch. That's why you hear traffic in the background. But I'll continue to let this cool down probably overnight tonight. I'll see. I'm going to just put it in the... Make room in the fridge and put it there because we're supposed to get in the 70s today out here. And then, um... Once I get a lot of this fat to the top and everything, I'll bring you along. You know, take it, skim it off. And then warm up the liquid, and we'll get the cannon. See you then. Okay, now we're back. You see the nice little coating of fat on the top. We're going to get that out. Without trying to break it up too bad. Dish. Look at that. It looks like almost a pie crust or something, don't it? But I'm going to do that and I'll turn this on and get the jars start to sanitize and I'll be back. Alright, so I'm back. I've got the fat put in here, which I'll be um, cooking with at some point. I got my four jars, cannon lids. I am not affiliated with it. Wish I was, but I'm not. Which I've got in here in this warm water, ready to go, along with my little lid lifter. 
I had this backup timer from Four Jars. I love this. Look at it. It's adorable. Got my handy dandy jar lifter. I got the broth going on the stove getting warmed up. I've got my Nasco canner sanitizing my jars. I got the vinegar ready to go to wipe the rims down. We don't need Pokey Joe even though he's on standby at all times for Canon. Because we're having a liquid and no foods. We don't need him today. Alright, so this looks like it's about warm enough. And our jars are definitely hot. You see that steam coming out? Oh yeah, definitely hot enough. We're going to get to Kenneth Bone Roth. All right. Are we, we're recording? Yes, we are. All right, we're back. One thing I did forget to grab was this. At least it was close by. Grabbed a jar, and we're going to start the process of filling these jars with some yumminess. I did a a um, video on chicken broth not too long ago. I'll link it somewhere in this video about the benefits of it and all the benefits of bone broth in general. You can make turkey broth lamb broth um of course i've made pork broth and it turned out so delicious beef broth vegetable broth there's all kinds now we're only going to fill to the one inch line which is when you move this it's this bottom rim right here that's the one inch right there so Grab a saucer or something to put this on. Here we go. This. Oh, it smells so delicious. And dip my towel to vinegar squeeze it out real good because you don't want the vinegar to get in there into the, the yummy broth wipe down the rim real good this gives you the chance of filling for any nicks and that any nicks right here would definitely Hinder the process of getting a good seal. And we're going to put a lid on her. And then we're going to put a ring on it, baby. Finger grip tight. So you turn it until it starts moving like that. And you stop. And then we are going to grab it with our jar lifter. Bring it over. Set it in the canner. Grab us another jar. Wash, rinse, and repeat. Like eat, sleep, breathe. I'm telling you, you make your own broth. Tastes so much better. I've already had about a half a cup of this this morning on this little crisp morning in Florida. We don't get that much here. And with the roasted bones, putting it in, in the oven and letting it roast, 
Oh my goodness. You talking about yummy? I love to also I can add a little bit more in there. I love to take anything that calls for water, any recipe that calls for water, you can jazz it up by adding a broth, chicken broth, bone broth, so on and so forth. Like macaroni and cheese. When you uh, drain the noodles and stuff, and then you go to add milk and some water or whatever, add some bone broth. It's good for you anyways. Why not? And it's way tastier than water on any day of the week. So, again, we don't need Pokey Joe. There's no food to press down to get the air bubbles out. So, we're going to wipe the rim real good. Get us a lid. Put on there. Grab us a ring. Put a ring on it. I do believe that was a Beyonce song, wasn't it? And look at that. Yummy. Drop it into the canner. Grab you another jar. And once again, wash, rinse, repeat. I really hope you'll try this at least once. No, a lot of the old ways have fallen on all of us. But the art of canning, I think everybody should at least try once in their life. To me, it's my sanctuary, I would say. I don't know. Um, it's my saving grace. It's my comfort zone. I started teaching myself to can back in 2020, actually. I uh, saw so my mom can when I was young, very young. I'd be sitting at the table and watching her can. But, you know, again, the lost ways of the world and our ancestors, you know. But I actually taught myself to can, among other things, that I dehydrate um, and stuff like that, you know, to preserve food because... I could say, and I could definitely see that, you know, with all the tragedies and stuff that was going on, there was no way that the government was going to save everybody, or probably anybody for that matter. Finger grip tight. And there we go. So my, my Nesco canner holds six pints. So I'm going to keep on filling these up. And then we'll set it to do its thing for ten minutes. You know, let off the steady steam and everything. And then we can set our, our timer for 20 minutes since it's pints. If you're doing quarts, it'll be 25 minutes. But I've got a you know, a few more pints to can up. But I'll get to this and I'll see you when it's time to get the canner going. Alright, we're ready to can. We'll make sure this is set to exhaust. We're going to hit um, high pressure can. And then 20 minutes since we're doing pints and we're gonna hit start so now it's going through the the little worm thing so what it's gonna do is it's gonna warm up in here 
I've got the lid locked down. It'll beep when it's ready to do the 10 minute uh, countdown for the exhaust. And it'll start steaming up here as it's, you know, doing its thing. It'll count down on here from 10 to 0. It'll give me three beeps. I'll, press, I'll come in here. I'll close this here. Straight up and down. To cut off um, the vent or the exhaust. And we'll be canning. So that's how we do this. If you're doing it on the... Uh, on another canner, make sure you check with your specific canning manual on what to do. I've got my water in here, of course, with my jars already. And I've got it set up to get it rocking and rolling. We'll see you back when it's time to pull them out. Alright, now it is time to grab these jars out of the canner. Can you see? Look at that. Again, they were in the canner. 20 minutes my time, my elevation, and then brought down to natural depressurization, I guess you would say. It came down on its own, no forced at all. I got six here, and then I got another cannon session to go. pressure canner and I don't want to risk cracking my jars and wasting all this hard work but I'm not going to take you through all that I just wanted to show you this it is so beautiful absolutely beautiful so make your own I hope you try it at least once if you're if you're scared I get a lot of this when I talk to people about pressure cannon that they're scared they've seen pressure canners blow up you know years many years ago things have changed they've they've made them pretty much foolproof where it won't happen anymore where they blow up and you hit the ceiling hit the the range hood and stuff like that but yes look at this they should be popping in the next five minutes we'll be making soups stews all kind of good stuff with this <gasps> did you hear it there's one I wanted to bring you along. I know this is an extra long video and it took several days to make. But I'm going to get this uh, water to cool off in the canner up just a little bit. Reheat the uh, broth up in the pot and get the, uh, well, get these jars heated up. Ah, ping, another ping. I love pings. And then get the uh, another batch started. We, that's how we roll. And then we'll just let it stay on the counter overnight, cool. And then we'll take the what's sealed and everything. We'll take the rings off, wash them down, label them, and we'll put them on our shelf. Like, subscribe, check out my other videos. Love to have you around. Tell your friends about us. Share our videos. Love to see you on the flip side. God bless you.